Hi there guys, it's Gareth here and welcome to this Finger Plunk production. So before we go any further, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room and yes, I disappeared for a couple of weeks. I have recorded videos explaining why I disappeared for a couple of weeks, but do you know what? I'm just going to scrap those videos and just say to you guys, yes, I was gone for a couple of weeks due to personal issues, but I'm back. I'm just going to gloss over kind of fact I was gone for a couple of weeks, not gloss over it, but just simply move on with things. I'm not going to take up a video space a video slot if you will explaining while I was gone I'm just gonna get right into this video right here right now and it is my personal feelings my experience and my review you could call it of the Resident Evil 2 remake you can see here I got the steelbook edition on the PS4 now to give you a bit of information a bit of FYI a bit of caveats before we start I never played the original Resident Evil 2 so to give you a bit of history with my own Resident Evil history or survival horror sort of history. When I was younger, throughout my entire life, I should say, I've had a respect for scary films or scary games or scary things in general. I should also state at this point, when it comes to films, my parents were very mindful of the age ratings on films. I didn't watch my first 18 until I was actually 17. Believe it or not. However, games were a little bit more liberal. They were a bit more liberal with what they allowed me to play and not allowed me to play, allowed me to play. But there were still times when my dad would put his foot down, because primarily my dad, he was the gamer in our family. So my mum would default to his his um, stance on the matter. And there were times where he put his foot down. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, Resident Evil 2, he did put his foot down because I do believe there was an iteration of Resident Evil 2 that was rated 18. I'll speak about that in a minute. So he allowed me to play the first Resident Evil. I do believe my dad worked on both the first and the second Resident Evil. Resident Evil 2, he is actually named as working on that game as a QA tester or the QA manager. I do believe QA stands for quality assurance. Two seconds. Watching the old whistle. So we had a copy of the original Resident Evil in the house on the PC that I was allowed to play. However, I distinctly remember getting to a particular part in that game and then basically turning tail and running out of, figuratively, <laughs> running out of the game, shutting it down and never going back to that game ever again. Then we move on later in life, and I used to be the horror game person amongst my friends. If a friend wanted to know if a horror game was going to be right for them, it was me that would say, yeah, you may find this a little bit scary or what have you. You, you could cope with it, that sort of stuff. It's funny now the roles have reversed in that I'm the person that goes to friends now and goes, oh, can I cope with this game or can I cope with this movie? It's kind of gone a bit topsy-turvy. Having said all of that, I've always felt as if I've been a closet horror game slash horror film fan. And of course, that previous horror game fandom is still in my psyche somewhere. It's in my brain. It's, it's in me somewhere. I just need to find it. And I think the Resident Evil 2 remake may have finally refound my love of Resident Evil and survival horror games and horror games in general. So I said at this beginning of the video, I never played the original Resident Evil 2. So I went into this game fresh, fresh, not knowing a lot about Resident Evil 2. I have since found out it's probably the most revered Resident Evil among fans, which again, it baffled me. Now I've completed the first, third, fourth, I've completed a few, quite a few of the Resident Evil games, but I never went back to Resident Evil 2. Why? Well, I'm going to uncover this part here. This is actually rated an 18, and it deserves the 18 rating. This game is very graphic, very scary, um, and it's not, I would say, for youngsters to be played. That's my own personal stance, but of course, parents make their own decisions what their kids play. That leads me quite nicely onto, and I segue into my parents respecting the age ratings of things. So when Resident Evil 2 first came out, I distinctly remember it being an 18 on some platforms. I think on the PC, it was an 18 originally. 
So what would happen back in the day? It happens far less nowadays because there's far less disparity between the PC and the console side of things. Is that games on the PC would actually get a higher age rating than they would on consoles simply because the graphics were better on the PC and they could be and the, the gore and the graphic and all that kind of stuff is depicted more graphically at the end of the day so they often got a higher rating now i do believe that down the road it got re-rated down to a 15. however because of that 18 rating my parents were very stern and stance on my on that 18 rating certificate as I said, because my parents grew up with respect of the certificate, the BBFC certification throughout my youth, I grew up with a certain, a certain appreciation for, and and wariness, I suppose, for the certificates of various games. So I never went back and, you know, played. Um, two seconds, guys. Sorry about that. So I never went back and played the original Resident Evil 2 because of that 18 certificate. And that may seem sound strange to some people. That's just how I grew up and that's the the respect I have for that sort of thing. So going into Resident Evil 2, to say I was shit scared would be an understatement. It took me three days after the release of the demo and constant battering, I don't think you might be saying this, from my good friend Luke to finally play through the demo. And I played through the demo and bloody well loved it. I have to say I bought Resident Evil 2 on the PlayStation 4. Originally I wasn't going to buy this, but due to reasons and I'm not going to reveal it on camera, I was able to buy this game and obviously have done so because it's in my hand. I have to say it arrived while I was at work and I was thinking, do I play it today or do I wait? I got home from work on Friday at 10 o'clock and proceeded to play it for an hour or two. I wasn't that over enamoured with the game to begin with. It being a remake of an old game, there was some idiosyncrasies and some things about the, what's the word, the core flow of the game kind of made me think, hmm. But then on Saturday, I again, 24 hours later, sat down at 10 o'clock and played it. And the next thing I know, it's 12 o'clock the next day. And I've played through both Leon's, Leon A and Claire B. And if you know anything about the game, then you'll know what that means. And bloody hell. Um, I'm not really sure what to specifically say. They have made some changes to this game than, that weren't in the original, apart from of course the graphics and stuff, such as the tyrant appears in both scenarios or both campaigns. In the original Resident Evil 2, he only appear, appeared in Claire's campaign, and that was story relevant that I'm not necessarily going to spoil. But in this campaign, he is in both Leon's and Claire's playthrough of the game. And bloody hell is he a force to be reckoned with. He is a big hulking monstrosity that can take you out on a few, few hits. And if he manages to punch you, you know, hit you when you're in amongst a group of zombies, you're going to be stun locked to death or you're just going to be completely mobbed and mauled by those zombies and you're not going to last very long. On hardcore, because I watched Luke play 10 minutes of hardcore, you literally can only take two bites from a zombie and you're down. We didn't even get to the tyrant part when he appears. So that's going to be interesting if that ever happens. During your second run playthrough of the game, he does appear a lot earlier. And it does, of course, bring up the tension. And that's what I want to talk about with this game. The tension is done exquisitely well. And I mean exquisitely well. The, the tension in this game is done the music, the atmosphere, the lighting, just everything about this game brings the tension up to max, and I love it. The tyrant being on the arse the whole time, you can hear him walking around. You can actually hear his massive clodoppers clogging around, clobbing around everywhere. You can hear him. You can hear him open up doors. You can hear him walking around. Yes, the game does, does 
does do some gamey things and warping around, like I discovered when I was share playing with Luke, that if you've managed to run away from him and you then shoot some zombies or make some noise, the game literally warps him just outside the uh, room that you're in. There are some rooms he can't go into, but he can go into quite a few of the rooms. And again, that leads me into another element of Resident Evil 2 Remake that, of course, wasn't in the original Resident Evil 2. And that's the fact that the original Resident Evil 2 had load screens in between, in between each time you went through a door. This doesn't have it. Due to the fact that modern, you know, modern hardware can cope with it, although I've literally just found out watching a speedrun of, of the original Resident Evil 2, apparently those door loads weren't required back in the Resident Evil 2. They were just put there for atmospheric reasons. Two seconds, guys. Ah, sorry about that. So, yeah, I actually found that quite interesting. They weren't required back then. They were just put there for atmospheric reasons. But the fact that there aren't any door loads and the whole environment is loaded means zombies can follow you through, uh, liquors could follow you through, although liquors don't tend to follow you through from door to door. The tyrant can follow you from door to door. It is, as I said, the tension is always there. It never, ever lets off because you're never, ever safe apart from the few rooms that you can go into that you know you're safe, such as the star's office or any save room or anything like that. There are a few rooms in which you don't, you, you're not safe. And there are times where I was playing, again, I was share playing with Luke and I was there, uh, I went into a room in the operations room or the press room, I think it is, in the, in the police station. And I was there thinking, am I safe in this room? Because the tyrant's walking past the door several times. I'm thinking, am I safe? Am I not safe? But all of a sudden, the tyrant bursts through the door and there he is in the room. You've got to find a way around him. And, oh, it's, and the story is, it's not the greatest story ever told, but it is actually really well done. It tugs on the heartstrings, because I'm not going to ruin the story, but one of the main parts of the story is a mutated G virus. Um, a person has injected themselves with the with a version of the G virus, and they happen to be someone's husband, someone's dad. They are a human being. And there are various parts of this game that humanise the characters, very much so. And there is a very sad story in, uh, in amongst here, there's also jokes amongst it. There are some very funny parts uh, in this game. There are a hell of a lot of references to other horror-based franchises, such as the Evil Dead franchise, of the, you know, Night of the Living Dead, Night of the, sorry, um, Die of the Dead, all the George A. Romeo films. There's a reference to Alien in there. There's a bunch of references to previous um, horror films. And it's just... Capcom have also taken their experience from all other, um, you know, all other genres and all other games they've done, including the Resident Evil franchise, and have just put so much care and attention into this game that it's a phenomenal game. And the highest accolade I can give this game is the fact that even after playing it through twice myself, watching Luke play through it, watching a streamer play through it I want to play through this game many many more times in fact it's the closest I've ever gotten to wanting to actually start speedrunning a game I've wanted to start speedrunning game a game for quite some time and this is literally maybe tipped me over the edge to maybe actually start speed speedrunning a game I rarely if ever play through a game multiple times if I do, it has to be a relatively short game, which is ironic because if you play through this game quick enough, it is actually a relatively short game compared to some others. However, the name of the game, ironically, is actually to play through it multiple times because there are multiple scenarios and situations you can you know, get yourself into, so to speak, with this game, such as there are some scenarios where you can't open up the item box or you're not allowed to use specific items all that kind of stuff. And it all leads into playing through this game multiple times. And if you do do it quick enough, the game can be about five hours in length. Um, both my playthroughs were five to seven hours 
in length. The first one I did was on assisted mode. The second was on hard, not hardcore, sorry, standard mode. And both of them were about five to five to seven hours in length. So two seconds. And sorry. So yeah, I mean, Luke's playthrough, I think he said was 10 hours. His original playthrough with, um, with Leon. So you can get between five to 10 hours in each scenario, depending on how much time you want to take going through each area. There are a bunch of stuff, you know, you, you can do. There's, there's some extra rooms you can go to to get an extra equipment, or you can steamroll through the game very quickly. Um, the assisted mode, exactly what it says on the sim, is assisted. It's got aim assist, um, your health regenerates over a certain period of time. Uh, also, I do believe it reloads for you because I did find myself in the standard mode having to reload myself. Um, there are various many, various many elements um, that are simply assisted for you. It makes the game a lot easier. On standard mode, it is closer to the original Resident Evil feel. However, there are still some modern mod cons, if you will, modern conventions, such as auto-saving, um, you don't need ink ribbons, and there are some just general, you know, modern game things in there. If you want the original, you know, Resident Evil experience, you go hardcore, where you require ink ribbons to save, there's no auto-saving, and one or two bites, and you are dead, pretty much. The game, from what I can understand, is very difficult. On standard mode, also, I will say, there is a difficulty variance in there the better you play the more difficult the game gets the worse you play the easier the game will get on hardcore mode it throws that out out the window and the ai is as tough as it can be hopefully i have you know um cleared everything up i want to say about this game if you haven't gathered from this video i am in fucking love with this game it is incredible i and it actually took me to watch a speed run of the original resident evil 2 and kind of think about horror games in general to sort of come to that conclusion to give you a a strong idea of what this game has actually enabled me to do i was literally watching someone play through outlast a couple of hours ago and i hate jump scares i hate horror games in general because I have, you know, quite a big sort of, so I suppose, anxiety or paranoia about jump scares. And yet this game is actually able to, it's almost, almost like some shock therapy or exposure therapy. In that it's it's got jump scares in there, some quite effective jump scares, actually. But it's, it's having the effect of a... a Excuse me. It's basically almost like exposure therapy. One of the best ways to get over some fears for some people is to be exposed to the fear itself and then you'll get over being scared of said thing. This game was doing exactly that for me and in spades. Um, I can see myself playing through this game many, many times over. To give you another little tidbit, I was actually considering playing through the campaign in this game and then selling this game because long story short things are a bit tight at the moment however i'm not going to be doing that because i want to play through this game as many times as i can even as, as i said earlier get to the point where i could potentially speed run this game i'm not going to speed run it to the point where actual speed runners you professional gamers and speed runners do it but i will be doing it um to my own pace and to my own speed and that kind of thing um we'll call it a gareth run rather than a speed run maybe but anyway, I think you get what I'm saying about this, guys. And everything I said before at the beginning of the video, it, you know, this game has allowed me to turn a corner. And it's a corner I'm glad I turned. Get this game, guys. If you are on the fence in any way, shape or form, get it. Um, it is an incredible, incredible game. Just to give you a little look at the Steelbook, which is a beautiful, beautiful Steelbook with the Umbrella logo. And the Resident Evil 2 uh, thing there. I've got Battlefront 2 in here right now because it was in my PS4 and I put Resident Evil 2 in there. I'm going to put that to one side. That's my DLC. The Elza Walker costume. And I'm just grabbing up the 
warranty information. We'll take out that front too, and you also get this really nice panoramic of Raccoon City. So yes, if you, again, I've said it a few times now, if you haven't gathered, I am enamored with this game in so many ways, and I highly suggest it if you are at all on the fence about it, please pick it up. If you've got the money, obviously, I understand that, as I just said, things may be a bit tight with other people. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, guys. If you could for me, leave me a like or dislike on this video, depending on your feelings. If they are more complicated, then please pop a comment down to the comment section down below. As I do like to say, YouTube is a social media platform. Let's make it social. Let's take it back from the trolls. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. It's big, it's red, it's free, it's do it. If you want to stay up to date with what I do, then please hit the bell icon. Make sure the quotations are around it and you receive a notification to your device of choice every time I upload a video. And as always, guys, you have been a very patient and supportive audience. And until next time, please take care. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day. Ta-ra.